this last video on minerals is to introduce you to all the other chemical mineral groups. So silicates was our last one. I left that up on the board because you see the suffix after the silica is O2. And understanding silicates being silica and oxygen will help you to interpret our other mineral groups. So we have other groups such as carbonates. Carbonate is going to have carbon. And then with the eights, it still refers to oxygen. So the carbonates, you have an oxygen group added on. We also have phosphates. So phosphates is going to have phosphorus and an oxygen group. We also have the uh, sulfates group. Sulfates, unsurprisingly, is going to be sulfur and oxygen. Borates is going to be boron, boron, here we go, boron and oxygen. And then we also have a couple of groups that end in ides. So when you think of ides, maybe think of them being like isolated. They don't have oxygen with them. Um, it's going to be the name of the, of the beginning of the word mineral plus something else that isn't oxygen. The eights is the oxygen. The ides, you have something else. So for our ides groups, we have halides, oxides, and sulfides. So oxides, that has to do, it sounds like oxygen, but it really has to do with metals that get rusted easily. So an oxide would be something that's um, iron rich um, or metal rich, something that can easily be oxidized, meaning it can rust or be altered by exposure to oxygen, but doesn't necessarily contain oxygen itself. So an example of an oxide would be like hematite. It was that blood red earthy one that also had a metallic luster for a separate sample. So, for the oxides, it's a metal. For the sulfides, it's sulfur and something else. So here we have a couple of sulfides. Remember pyrite I said is iron sulfur. So this is in our sulfides group. And here we have a, a specimen that has lead and sulfur. So sulfides is going to have sulfur in it. And then halides, it's not quite as obvious because the beginning H-A-L, Hal, doesn't correspond to a single element. Instead, it has to do with the whole group. So if you've ever heard of a halophile, it's a type of organism that loves salt. So that halo has to do, that beginning part of the word, has to do with salt. It also comes up in um, our geology lab. We'll talk about thermohaline circulation. It has to do with the temperature and saltiness of water. So the hal part has to do with salts. And although we usually use the word salt to mean sodium chloride for like our table salt, salt in chemistry really has to just do with, with a couple of ions being put together. So you have a cation and an anion, and they are combined together. So we have sodium chloride. Um, but for the halides specifically, we have a halide group. Here we have the halides group on the table of elements. And we have that, that chlorine right there. We also have fluorine, bromine. Um, we're not going to see any iodine or astatine or ten tennessinine elements, but we are going to see the fluorine, uh, fluorine, chlorine, and bromine types of minerals commonly in Earth's crust. So for our halide group, it has to do with the halogens grouping on elements. So this video is just to explain the chemical theme or scheme of our different mineral groups and names. In your lab activity, you're going to be going into the different types of minerals. So you'll be given a mineral name, and you'll go and find what its composition is, and from there determine which category it fits into.